What an amazing Easter we've already experienced. And we're going to continue now with the teaching of God's Word. I I can just tell you, in my 50 years of living, this has been by far the most interesting year that I think I've ever experienced. We have had major news every single day, it feels like, for the last year. Whether it was COVID or a U.S. presidential race, the Australian fires have flooded our news uh, streams, the senseless murders on the streets, Black Lives Matter protesting, the challenges with the royal family, the economy here in the United States, and globally, the list goes on and on and on, right? I mean, the news cycle never slows down. Wouldn't it be nice? If we could just reset our last one year, I mean, it feels like the news cycle is always just so full of bad news. People are angry, uh, people are fighting, people are sick, people are dying, people are looking at other people like with this hatred in their eyes, looking to hurt people. I mean, our world is full of news and most of what we hear in the news cycle and on social media or some broadcast network It's just not good and healthy. And just so we're on the same page, there have been seasons throughout all of mankind that have been just as hard, maybe even worse at times, or brutal, just as challenging, just as hateful. But now here's the difference. We have instant access to the news all over the globe right at our fingertips. We are one click away from knowing what's happening on the other side of the planet. And this makes things In our generation, far more challenging when it comes to the news cycle and all of this bad news. We need to hear some good news. Hey, I heard this incredibly good news story about this guy named Mr. P. Mr. P is this Italian man who tested positive for the coronavirus this last year, and he survived it. Now, what was so interesting about Mr. P's story, you guys, is he was 101 years old. 101, did you get that? He has beat the Spanish flu. He has beat um, the Holocaust. Now, come on, somebody. In a world full of bad news, a little good news like Mr. P, I hope it can put a smile on your face. Yo, if God can do it for Mr. P, he can do it for me. He can do it for you. Humanity just needs a little glimmer of hope. Just a little good news is always welcomed. And I just want to say to you today that that's what we're here about. That's what we're talking about. You know, good news is what puts a smile on our face. But bad news makes good news all the better. And it's important to us because, now don't get me wrong, good news is always good news. But when good news has been preceded by bad news, the good news always tastes better. I mean, it's good news that God protects his people, but it's even better news when we're being attacked. You know what I'm saying? It's good news that God is a healer, but oh, it's so much sweeter and better when we have an illness in our body or it's a loved one that needs to be healed. It's good news that God is the provider, but it is huge great news when we're in desperate times. I mean, it's good news that Jesus is the deliverer, but it is great news when you are trapped and bound by something, and Jesus comes in to your rescue. Hey, friend, I can tell you, it is good news that Jesus forgives, but it is so much better. When we come to the point in our lives when we know that we're a sinner and in need of his forgiveness, it is good news that Jesus died on the cross, but it's great news that he rose from the dead. So come on, church. Uh, Right now, you can give a big amen. You can give a shout out for Jesus, and I know that we got some bad news all around us, but I want to remind us there is some great news on this Easter. And no matter what the fear or pain may be in your life, it is Easter time, and that is great news. As a matter of fact, I want to read the passage of Scripture that we've already started with today and continue forward with it. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 28, here's what the Scriptures say. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they went to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and he sat on it. I mean, get the picture of this. The angel sitting up on top of the stone. 
His face, it shone like lightning. His clothing was as white as snow. The guards, they shook with fear when they came, when, when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Here, here's what the angel said. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified, but he isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said. Man, somebody can give a shout right there. Jesus is alive. So he died on Friday, and when he died, I can just tell you, man, his followers, they began to scatter. They went into hiding. They thought it was all over. They had given up hope. On Friday, it appeared that the Jesus movement had stopped. On Saturday, everything was silent. It was a dark two days. But, oh, friend, on the third day at dawn, just as the sun came up, the sun, S-O-N, came out. And hey, listen, we live here in Florida. For, for those of you that track with the fellowship or if you're brand new into the fellowship, we're like right in between the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. And I can just tell you, there's nothing like seeing a sunrise on the Atlantic Ocean over on the East Coast. I mean, when night is darkest, the, the stars are glittering. The canvas of the dark night is just shining bright. And then all of a sudden, as you look out over the horizon, the glow begins as the day begins to break. And when the sun bursts forward over that horizon and the sun comes up, it is the most amazing scenes, if not one of the most amazing scenes you are ever going to see, no matter how dark things get. No matter how dark the night is, when the sun, S-O-N, comes up, when the Son of God shows up, all things are brighter. Now that is great news. And to me, it seems like things oftentimes get darker or worse before they get better. Matter of fact, as I was preparing for Easter, I thought about uh, my, my wife is a realtor, and she recently had shown this piece of property to uh, some clients, and, and they went out to see this piece of property, and she was telling me about it. I eventually went out there and saw it, and the house had been abandoned for some time. But over a three-week span of time, over a four-week span of time, they began to go in there and cut back the shrubbery and cut the grass and cut back the trees, and Man, now there's this beautiful, beautiful piece of lake property. What was once abandoned, unusable, now it is something to see. Man, it was inhabitable three or four weeks earlier, but now this beautiful lakefront piece of property is just amazing to see. I can tell you, when things seem to get the worse, then always you can just know, no matter how bad it gets, when Jesus enters into the scene, things get brighter. It's almost like the darker the night, the brighter the light. You know what I mean? I mean, friend, without the resurrection, I can just tell you, Friday's crucifixion, it would have simply just been a bunch of angry religious people wanting to end the movement. It was this group of people that they don't see any good news. The only thing that they can see is how it has affected their their own personal influence, their own position, their own pocketbook. And the cross means nothing without the resurrection. Uh, now, the bloodshed, it, it would have been no question. This was a heroic feat on Jesus' part, but it would have been just viewed as nothing more than a martyr on a cross. So I don't want you to miss this point. We need the cross. It is the bloodshed of Jesus that has given us the forgiveness of sins, but the power comes on the third morning, when things were darkest, when everybody had scattered, when everybody had gone into hiding, Jesus shows up. And that's what we celebrate today, friends. When things seem like they were over, he breathes again. He brings life into this dead movement. And when Friday was over, the morning and the pain had set in, hope seemed gone. But on Sunday morning, as the sunrise comes up, so the Son of God rose and took his place. This is great news. So, from our text early on Sunday morning, these women, what they're doing is they're walking early in the morning. The darkness still is out, and, and it's about to have the sun come up over the horizon, 
And as they're headed down to the tomb of Jesus, when all of the sudden, as the sun bursts forth over the horizon, an earthquake begins to shake, the stone is rolled back from the tomb, and the angel from heaven sits up on top of this stone. And he invites the women, hey, I want you to come in and see for yourself the one whom you're seeking. He's not here. He has risen from the dead. He is alive. So listen, don't miss this today. The angel of God did not come to roll the stone back so that Jesus could get out. No, 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 friend. Listen, he rolled it back so that you could come in. God can't be trapped. He can't be contained. He cannot be concealed. There is no stone that can hold him back. If God wants to, he just speaks the word and the stone is rolled back to let Jesus out. But friend, it is to invite you in. You and I are invited to know the risen Savior. And he is known to all of mankind as Jesus. Friday, it brought fear and death. His followers thought it was over. They thought it was the end of the movement. Saturday, it encouraged silence. People were in hiding. But oh, friend, what we celebrate today is the break of day on Sunday, on the third day. Sunday was shouting loud some great news. It was shouting to all generations, Jesus the King is alive. Man, does that bring hope. Now here's what I want to do. I'm going to ask our band to come back up because I want to continue to worship in song. I know this is Easter. It's amazing. But I want to remind you, man, don't give up hope. I know it's been a tough year, but don't give up hope. Jesus is alive. Here's a good way to think about hope. Someone once shared this with me, and so I'm going to pass it forward to you. Hold on, pain ends. Hope, hold on, pain ends. Don't give up. Don't let go of your hope. He is alive. Jesus has risen from the dead. Now, I know the news of our time, it doesn't look good. I know the news cycle spins it to where things always look bad. And I know that the news cycle is constantly trending towards bad news. But don't miss this truth today. He was crucified and he died. Man, don't miss that. They crucified him, he died. And that was bad news for his followers on Friday and Saturday. But Sunday was coming. So I want to remind you today, don't give up hope. He has risen from the dead. Now, one last thought. The angel then instructed the women. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go and tell. Friend, you and I have good news. We got great news, so let's go and tell. We need to blast this message all over social media. We need to get the word out. We need to shout it from the rooftops. We need to tell our classmates and our teammates. We need to let our coworkers know the good news that we live in a world full of a bad news cycle, but everybody needs a little good news. So you and I have the greatest news known to mankind. We must go and tell. Jesus who was dead, he is alive, and it is finished. Father, we thank you, and we praise you for what you did in the sending of your son. And Jesus, we thank you for laying down your life, but oh, today we celebrate that you are alive, and it is finished. In Jesus' name, amen.
It is done. It's finished. Jesus died and he rose again. Friends, what we've just sung about in our worship time has to become a part of our life. So today, I invite you into the greatest news of all time. Jesus rose from the dead. So here's what we're going to call on you to do. You need to admit that you're a sinner. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and then confess it in prayer. Come to the Father and say, God, forgive me. I believe today with all that is in me, I believe and today I confess I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus died. I believe that he rose again. And today I'm inviting you into my life and I'm giving you mine. See, friends, that confession is called prayer. Right now, wherever you are, pray that prayer. 
something like this. Father, I admit today I'm a sinner and I need you. I believe that you died on a cross. I believe you were buried for three days and I believe you rose again and with every fiber in me today, I believe. I'm gonna exercise my faith and say, God, I need you in my life and I offer you mine. Today, I I'm a Christ follower. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, I can tell you, if that's you, you need to let someone know. Let us know. Reach out. You can post it in this broadcast. You can reach out to us and let us know. I can tell you there would be no greater joy for this team than to know that you have given your life in faith to Jesus Christ. So, Resurrection Day. Oh, what great news it is. I want you to continue one last time. We got an amazing song. Listen to the lyrics. Join in. It is awesome. He has finished it. Friends, he's alive. This is great news.
Jesus is alive. Woo! Great job. Happy Resurrection Sunday. That was awesome, you guys. That was awesome. Yo. You guys pulled it right. off. We did something. 6.30, 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 10. Four and a half hours. It's a good thing we planned in advance. 